out here. That was a big rock in the middle of the wind road. On the outskirts of Perth, Steve Graham is preparing for one of the longest journeys of his fabled 40-year career. It's another run in the outback, and uh, this is going to be a good one. Steve spent a lifetime riding the country's wildest roads. This is seriously bad news. Cutting his teeth on tracks not built for trucks. Now, with faithful sidekick Teeny, Steve's tackling two of Australia's most notorious dirt roads, the Great Central and the Tanami. And taking on both back to back. You can get electric ones of these. You can get old like me and get unfit, so you're better off keeping the manual ones. This is a load of structural steel. This is my first trailer of steel. Going on the back, two trailer loads of house frames for a remote Aboriginal community in Central Australia. It's just the first of three separate loads Steve has to deliver on this epic run. Take the middle road right straight through the guts to Alice Springs, unload this load and uh, then we're going to put a container of, of all things furniture, beds and cupboards and things to take up the bloody Tanami Road which is not without its challenges. Making things even tougher, Steve's got just nine days to do it or he'll lose his next job. So I reckon we got about 2,700 kilometres away I'm going to Alice Springs, 1,000 k up the Tanami Road and then 3,000, just under 3,000 k's back home. So that should be a good little run around the outback. From Perth, Steve will cross the Great Victoria Desert to Alice Springs, then head north through the Tanami Desert to Balgo and Halls Creek before the long road home. It's an enormous loop covering 6,500 kilometres and nearly one third of it is bone jarring dirt. So let's go, we'll get into it. Right, we're fueled up, everything looks all right. We're on the road with this load. We're going out back trucking, anything can happen. This early in a journey, Steve should be feeling good about his truck, but a recent repair is playing on his mind. I had a bolt break in the belly tank in uh, one of my trailer fuel tanks. I've replaced that. I've just got to keep an eye on that. That fuel tank may have a bit of a leak in it, and I certainly don't want to run out of fuel out, out in the middle of the desert. After 1,000 k's of smooth bitumen, Steve readies himself for the great central road. He lets down his tyres for the battering ahead. It gives me an easier ride on the corrugations and the bumps, and it does save the truck. The repair to Steve's fuel tank seems to be holding up, but under the bonnet, signs of an even bigger problem. I seem to be developing an oil leak back here I don't like. If Steve's engine runs dry of oil, it will quickly destroy itself, leaving him stranded, grounding his truck for weeks and lumping him with a five-figure repair bill. Might be messed from where the boys service the engine. Steve hopes it's just spillage from a recent oil change. Yep. He'll have to take the risk and get back on the road. 100 k's up the Great Central Road and Steve hits the end of the maintained track. The road will get worse now. I start to worry about how well this freight will handle the Docker River end. But it's not just hard on the freight. Constant corrugations are hard on the body. A bad road can have 2,000 ridges every kilometre. On a journey like Steve's, that adds up to millions of violent bumps, shaking truck and driver to their very core. It's rough as what we reckon it would be. Then, through the dust, Steve spots something wrong. Well, this strap's broken because the road's so badly corrugated. Everything's vibrating and shaking and rattling and rubbing together, bouncing up and down. That's my concern. People don't like to uh, to receive their freight broken. With a bit of luck, I'll get to the oldest by dark. He submits himself to more punishment. It might be a long, slow afternoon doing the last couple of hundred k's. That's uh, out back trucking, I suppose. You get it good, then you get it bad.
Steve's now endured 400 kilometers of pounding corrugations. And neither the other side of the road nor a slower speed can offer any relief. The sun's almost gone. Driving in the dark on this road would be inviting disaster. I'll just pull up and uh, keep going in the morning. Another strap has snapped. Probably just something sharp up the top there for the corrugations vibrate. The house frames are holding together, but Steve's schedule is falling apart. I would have liked to have got to the bitumen tonight, but this road's too rough to go that quick. Steve needs to be in Alice Springs early tomorrow morning, but with 600 k still to go, those hopes have been left in the dust. He is now getting close to Alice Springs. Problems on the road have cost Steve his unload window. It just means unloading and reloading will we'll go into tomorrow. He needs a fast turnaround in Alice to make up time. I've got 4,000 k to go to get home, and I think it's the 7th today, and I'm supposed to leave for Darwin on the 15th. I've got to keep an eye on the clock here. Well, there's the McDonald Rangers. I'm just about to get into Alice Springs now to get into the yard. It's good to get here and uh, hand it over to someone else. But any relief is short-lived. Only two workers are available to unload Steve's truck. And worse still, they can't rush it. These frames, once a lot of the restraints are off, the whole damn lot can come falling over. It has happened, so you can't push them. They've got to just take their time. Steve is already half a day behind and is worried he'll lose more time on the next leg. When I think about the Tanami, it's a notorious road. It's a 1,000 kilometres of... It can be a 1,000 k of pain sometimes. it will be nice to see it going faster, but you can't make things happen faster. This is going a lot slower than what I thought. Try as he might, Steve's losing the race against the clock. Inside the container, household furniture. For Steve, it's a red flag. Furniture and Tanami is definitely, definitely not a good combination. If it's not packed properly, he'll be delivering a container of firewood. Thank you very much. I appreciate your help. Thank you very much, too. With one last push, Steve and Teeny are ready to roll out. It's, uh, it's good to be on the road again. It's a smooth start for the next leg. But it doesn't last long. Well, this is it. We're on the Tanami proper now. And already I can feel those little corrugations pounding into me, just letting me know that we're here. I'm looking at that fire and I'm wondering whether it's going to be close to the road when I get there or not. It's tinder dry out there and bushfires can move faster than a truck. Steve's hoping the bolt he fixed on his fuel tank is holding. A flammable leak now would be a disaster. If it's close to the road, when I get close to it, I will stop to see if I've got no leaking belly tanks or fuel tanks dribbling in place to check things like that. But only a few kilometres down the road, Steve gets pulled over by a passing mate. Yeah, roger, mate. I'm just coming up the top of a hill now, so I'll see you in a second. Roger. That's uh, someone just come out of Balgo. They want me to take something back. What do you got, Pope? Uh, 20 of unleaded. Oh, I forgot to give it to him. Uh, well, it goes sideways yeah. in the toolbox, yeah. and it won't leak. This would be the worst freight. I'd rather someone gave me an atomic bomb to cart in there than petrol. So what could possibly go wrong? Just what Steve needs. More fuel in bushfire country. One drive. Don't change gears yet. Well, I'll be blowed. That's a grader up there. That's a sight for sore eyes. I like graders. The grader has smoothed the section of road ahead. Hey, how far are you done, mate? Yeah, 
and shit house on the WA side, eh? Very, mate, very. All right, mate, no worries, thank you. I'll take whatever I can get. You have a nice day. Double my first one, mate. Well, the news from the grader drop. Oh, shit. Be out of here. That was a big rock in the middle of the windrow. If I said to take out a diff, I oh, would hit something under there. I just hope I haven't hurt nothing. It's just something I've got to deal with, so I'll stop and have a look up here. It's the lowest of blows. Serious damage from the rock could mean curtains for this job and Steve's next. We got lucky with that rock. Everything's looking all right so far. His luck needs to hold. A critical job waits for him back in Perth, 3,000 kilometres away, if he can make his deadline. What it gets down to is if I don't get in on time, then, you know, I blow half a month's income. Steve's made it to Balgo, the midway point of his 6,500 kilometre trip. After a long day on the Tanami, he's still behind schedule. He's hoping for a quick and easy unload. I've had a win here in Balgo. The suggestion that they unload the whole container on site. That means 10 minutes. They'll lift the two items off and I'm out of here. I'm going to Horse Creek. Precious hours saved here means he could make it back to Perth in time for a lucrative job. Steve's just bought himself half a day. Bye, mate. Thank you. See you, Angie. It's a moment worth celebrating. There's my new hat. Beautiful. Another trip, another hat, another day. Steve's on his way to Halls Creek to pick up his third load, but still ahead. 300 kilometres of tough Tanami track. The race against the clock starts again tomorrow. New load, new destination, a new race. He's nearly done with the Tanami, but he still needs to conquer a series of long, steep climbs. These are the hills going into Halls Creek. It's a challenge every time. Steve's going to have to call on all of his truck's 18 gears. You go from 6th or 7th or 8th gear down to 2nd or 3rd and bang, there's a load straight on. And draw on every ounce of juice from his 600 horsepower engine. Put the power on, you got to grab a gear. Producing blistering engine temperatures. Up goes the turbo, 450 degrees Celsius. After days of truck smashing, dog thumping dirt track, Steve finally gets relief on the smooth bitumen. Yeah, this is the stuff we've been looking for for a few days. A thousand kilometre run up the Tanami makes you appreciate the stuff. But the Tanami's not done with him yet. I've got oil wetness inside this wheel hub, which indicates to me that I have a wheel seal failure or possibly a front wheel bearing. This wheel steers his entire truck. If it gives out on the road, the consequences could be disastrous. I can't in my own mind load this road train up. You blow this thing. I, I can't afford a front wheel bearing failure. If it is, there'll be a vital clue. Metal fragments in the oil. There's no metal in that oil. That's good. That's good. If this, if that wheel bearing was chopping itself to pieces, this oil would have shiny particles in it. I'll simply top up the oil on this hub and keep an eye on it. In four days' time, Steve's booked for a big job in Perth, but he's still 3,000 kilometres away. He needs to get his next load, a mobile office, two mini diggers, and dozens of wooden pallets onto his truck quickly. I need to fill up that space out to the gate. It's a jigsaw, and the pieces need to fit. Now, are we going to get another one in there? Good job, man, good job. Steve senses trouble. Just hold it, fellas. 
a badly jammed pallet could destabilize the load. For a perfectionist, there's only one solution. Fellas, we might have to just take them off and start, start from scratch. We can't. A call from a client distracts him. And the loading crew take matters into their own hands. The forklift is bogged. Without it, loading's going nowhere. That's it. Nicely done. That's lovely, fellas. Beautiful. Thank you, mate. Steve knows this load will move. It needs to be well secured. You do have to see it be serious about putting plenty of straps on it. He's ready to hit the road. But there's another delay. No one loves changing tyres. <laughs> It's a wrestling match. Each tire weighs 50 kilograms. Time has beaten him. He'll have to rest up for the night. Do you know what I'm thinking about right now? All the flavours cold beer comes in. Steve's got three days to cover 3,000 Ks if he's to make a big job back in Perth. From here on, he needs a smooth run. But the troublesome load is back to haunt him. I don't like the way that's starting to move. It's actually moved out a fair way. Just 50 kilometres in, and it's already shifting around. A danger to Steve and other drivers. I'm going to have an easy run, not muck around my freight on the side of the road. He's forced to waste precious driving time retying his freight. That front gate there yesterday when I left was in line with this, and it's all dropped across to that side. I've got to fix the problems as I go along, but it doesn't make it much good for getting there on time. He may be on the smooth bitumen, but now Steve has to deal with traffic and some of the biggest on the road. Your whole driving attitude changes when you get down south. You, you've got to stay focused. And we don't want any mingles. This 5.5 metre wide load eats up most of the bitumen. It's a bit of a hold up, but Steve's in the hands of the pilots, one behind and one a kilometre ahead. It's their job to guide passing traffic around safely. Clear communication is critical, but the airways are jammed. I'll just drop back a bit now. We're going. Are you talking to the southbounder? The southbound behind the big one coming around, then, yeah? The pilots called through the wrong truck. Finally, Steve gets the chance to pass. Ones take a bit, a bit of getting around, but we do it pretty safely with a, all talking to each other. He's on the home stretch. It's been one of his biggest trips ever. He survived shifting loads. I don't like the way that's starting to move. Mechanical scares. I may have a wheel seal failure. And killer corrugations on two of the toughest roads in the world. It's the end of yet another epic chapter in a legendary career. <laughs>